Hello everybody, this is Mikhail Porosian from AUA and this is my first online lecture on probability. Uh, this, the, this is the 21st lecture from the last Friday, 13 March, we have missed. And today we're going to talk about cumulative distribution functions and discrete random variables. So here are our topics. Uh, last time we were talking about cumulative distribution function and random variables. We have given some properties of CDFs, cumulative distribution functions. And today we're going to uh, consider some examples of some problems uh, about cumulative distribution functions. And the main point in that problems, in that examples, will be to read information about random variables from their CDFs. And the second part will be devoted to discrete random variables, some special types of type of random variables. Okay, so from the last lecture, uh, assume that x is a random variable. You can think uh, as x being the number of students that will watch this video today. Uh, of course, uh, I do not know beforehand what x will be. So it is a random variable. Okay, uh, the problem we want to solve concerning random variables is to be able to calculate this kind of probabilities where A is a subset in R. And in particular, we want to be able to calculate probabilities of this form. So what is the probability that X is between A and B? And this can be written in this form, that the probability that X is between A and B. And this is a particular case of that. A and B are any random numbers. Uh, for example, uh, I can be interested for, for that X being the number of students that will watch today this video. I can be interested, what is this probability that uh, X will be larger than zero? What is the probability that somebody, that somebody will watch this video? Or I can be interested in the probability that x is larger than 25 so what is the probability that today most of our students will watch this video etc okay so i'm erasing this another changing the mode uh, another nice thing is that um, it is enough to be able to calculate probabilities of this form uh, this form this is the same uh, to be able to calculate probabilities of that. So if we know how to calculate probabilities of this form for any x uh, from R, uh, then we will be able to calculate probabilities of that form. Here x, that capital X is our random variable. This is our random variable. And this small x is any real number. So this can be 0, this can be minus 5, this can be square root of 2, etc. So uh, because of special importance of that, that probabilities, we are denoting by f of x. And this is already a function of x. Uh, and this function is called the CDF, cumulative distribution function of our random variable x. Okay, so if we know how to calculate this CDF, then we can use that to calculate probabilities of that form. And let's talk about that in our next uh, slide. Okay, so let me switch to the next slide. Last time uh, we studied some properties of CDFs and we gave the characterization of CDFs. So, uh, sorry. A function f is a CDF of some random variable if and only if it satisfies these properties. So the first property says that f is between 0 and 1 for any x. And the second property says that f tends to 0 when x goes to minus infinity. And f tends to 1 when x tends to plus infinity. So f is 0 at minus infinity and f is 1 at plus infinity. Another property of CDF is that it is an increasing function. 
And the last one is that f is right continuous at every point. So if x0 is any real number, then the right hand limit of f at that point, so the limit of f of x when x tends to x0 from the right hand side, is exactly equal to the value of f at that point. And in particular, if f is continuous at every point, then it will be right continuous at every point too. Okay, uh, by the way, you can infer the first property from the second and third. Think about that and try to prove by yourself. The next thing is how to calculate probabilities by using this CDF, using F. Uh, last time uh, we learned that we can calculate this probability uh, that x is equal to some particular value a by calculating this difference. So the probability that x is equal to a is uh, f of a minus the left hand limit of f at a. So this is the limit when x, limit of f of x when x approaches a from the left hand side and we have learned also uh, the following property that we can calculate the probability that x is between a and b including b and uh, including b and not including not including that a by just having the following so let me just quickly show so this is that formula f of b minus f of a and the idea was the following so if this is sorry i need to erase that so erasing that and then taking the pencil trying to draw correctly so if this is the real line uh, denoting the values of our random variable x and if this is a this is b and if we are interesting in the probability that x will be here so x capital x a random variable will be here including b but not including this point a then we can think like this i'm changing the color okay so first, let's calculate the probability that x is from minus infinity to b. So the probability that x is between, so minus infinity is less than capital X, a random variable is, and is less or equal than b. This is the same as the probability that x is less or equal than b and this is exactly by definition of our cdf exactly f of b now uh, if we will calculate the probability that x is here that will be uh, the probability that x is less or equal than a is exactly f of a again by the definition of our cdf now, the probability that x is between a and b, including b and not including a, is just the difference of these two probabilities, and it is equal to f of b minus f of a. We will use this property to calculate probabilities uh, of x being between two numbers. Okay. So let's move forward. Now, uh, I will give several examples. But I am asking you to first read the uh, statement of the problem of that example, then pause this video, then try to solve it by yourself, then switch the video back on and check if your solution is correct. So let's move forward. And our first example is the example 21.1. .1. So I, I'm giving this 21. So lecture number 21, the example number one. So you can refer in your questions in our Slack channel. Okay, so uh, 
this is a graph of some function f and the problem is asking the example is asking to see if it is a cdf of some random variable x and in the case if it is to calculate the probability that x is 0 0.2 x is 1 etc x is between 0 3 etc okay so uh, the solution is the following in fact this function is not a cdf because every cdf uh, needs to be defined for every real number so our function f is not defined at this point well this is one say this is 0 0.4 it is not defined at this point so our function is not defined in fact on the whole interval 0 1 so because f is not defined uh, everywhere it cannot be a cdf of any random variable so the answer is no so we cannot calculate these probabilities so our next problem is uh, 21.2 we have a graph uh, sorry we have a graph of some function it is defined for every real number well um, computer is not allowing to draw from minus infinity to plus infinity so I'm drawing from minus 4 and 4 assuming that this goes this way and that goes that way okay um, and the first problem is it is it the CDF of some random variable is this function given by the graph is a CDF of some random variable x to answer to this question uh, we need to check all properties for a CDF so the first property is that uh, our CDF needs to be between uh, 0 and 1 so this is 0 this is 1 and all values of our function are between 0 and 1 uh, the other property, the second property was that when x goes to minus infinity, so if we continue this way, then our f uh, approaches 0. Of course, it approaches 0. And if x tends to plus infinity, so if we move this way, then our function approaches 1. So it approaches 1. So it satisfies the second property too. The third property was that f is an increasing function and we have uh, obviously an increasing function and the uh, fourth property is that our function needs to be continuous from the right hand side at every point. So say if I'm checking at this point it is continuous so it is right continuous if I'm checking at this point it is continuous so it is also right continuous the only questionable point suspicious point is this point this is one and you can see that the value at one is this much so this much um, close to 0 0.80 something 81 and if we will approach one from the right hand side if i will take value x here calculate the value of our function at that point then take closer point this is another x and calculate the value then the values at that point will approach will approach to this value so f is continuous from the right hand side at any point so it is a cdf of some random variable x we do not know much about that x yet but it is a cdf of some of that x of some random variable okay so let's move forward i'm erasing things and changing the slide so the second question is calculate the probability that x is 0 0.2 so let me take the pencil okay change maybe the color nice okay 0 0.2 this is one 0 0.2 is somewhere here 0 0.2 okay 
we know that the probability that x is equal to 0 0.2 is by the property we have considered earlier it is the value of our CDF at 0 0.2 minus the left hand side limit of F at that point so because in our case in our case so let me try to draw this is the value of our f at 0 0.2 because our function is continuous at that point 0 0.2 so the left hand limit also the right hand limit uh, is exactly equal to the value of f at that point so we will get 0 as the answer so the probability that x is taking the value 0 0.2 is 0 The next problem is to calculate the probability that x is equal to 1. x is a random variable behind this CDF, some random variable with this CDF. And we want to get information what is the probability that x is equal to 1. 1 is here. So this is that point 1, the discontinuity point. And we want to calculate this probability. This probability by that property is equal to the value of our CDF at 1 and minus the value of CDF at 1 minus, meaning that we need to calculate the left-hand limit of F at the point 1. So F of 1 is equal to, well, something around 0. Point, maybe 0. Point 0.8 or something like that. And let's calculate the left-hand side limit of f at 1. So we need to take x values approaching, approaching 1 from the left-hand side and calculate the limit of the values of f. So at that x, the value of f is this much. If I will take another closer point and from the left-hand side, point, to 1, the value will be this one. If I will take another one, the value will be this one. And we can see that when x is approaching 1 from the left-hand side, the values of f are approaching this point, exactly this point. So the value, the, the limit from the left-hand side will be something around this, and this is 0 0.50, say this is equal to 0 point say 50 50 oh, sorry 52 or 55 maybe something like that and this is 0 point 20 20 0 point 25 okay uh, geometrically that probability that x is equal to 1 was this jump size. So this is exactly equal to the probability that x is equal to 1. And going back to our previous problem, there was no jump here. That's why, well, the jump size was 0. That's why the probability was 0. Okay, so let's move forward. The next problem, again concerning the same function, the same CDF and same random variable x, is to calculate this probability. The probability that x is between 0 and 3, including 3 and not including 0. So this is 0, this is 3, this is 3. And we want to see what is the probability that our capital X, our random variable, is between 0 and 3. By that property of CDF, this probability is just the difference between f of 3 and f of 0. This is very simple. So f of 3 is the value of our function f at 3 is, well, 1. 
and f of 0 is the value of our function at 0 it is 0 0.3 say 0 0.3 so we will have this is equal to 0 0.7 so there is a 70 percent chance that our x is between 0 and 3 and by the way geometrically this is just this is f of 0 this is f of 3 and we are just calculating this height the difference between f of 3 and f of 0 so this is probability that x is between 0 and 3 by the way if we will include here the point 0 because the probability of x being 0 is against 0 then we will get the same answer also, if we will exclude the point, say, if I will erase this equality sign here, again, because of continuity at the point 3, we will get the same result. So the next question. Uh, we want to calculate the probability that x is less or equal than 1. This is our one. So this is by definition, by the very definition, this is just the value of our CDF at one. And the value of our CDF at one is 0 0.8, say, 0 0.8. And the next problem is the following. So moving forward, next problem is calculate the probability that x is less than 1, exactly. Not equal to, but less than 1. So uh, we can do in the following way, say calculate the probability that x is less or equal than 1, then minus the probability that x is exactly equal to 1, or we can do the following. So this is equal to the value of f at 1 minus. So the left hand side limit of our CDF at 1 and minus f at minus infinity, which is 0. I just can write this is 0. I can just skip and this is equal to f of 1 minus. So we need to calculate, this is our point 1, we need to calculate the left hand side limit of our f at 1. So if we are approaching this way, then f is approaching this value which is 0 0.55 maybe. This is 0 0.55. If you will add the probability that x is equal to 1, that is 0 0.25, you will get the probability that x is less or equal than 1. Okay. Nice. And the last problem, hopefully, is the following. Uh, we want to calculate the probability that x is larger than 0. So x is larger than 0. This is 0. Uh, we can just write this is equal to 1 minus and take the complement of that event and the complement, oh, sorry, I'm not writing correctly, uh, so I need to erase, so I'm erasing this, I need to write a probability, not f. By the way, that is a common mistake. Do not write f and some inequality inside, but write probability and x is less or equal than 0 and this is 1 minus by definition of our cdf 1 minus f of 0 and f of 0 was 0 0.3 say this is 1 minus 0 0.3 which is 0 0.7 okay 
So the probability that x is here from 0 to infinity is just, well, we are calculating this, so this is just this difference, the height of this. Okay. So I'm raising and moving forward. So exercise 21.3, the next exercise. And we are given again another function graph. And the problem is asking if the following graph is a graph of a CDF of some random variable. And if yes, we need to calculate this, that, that, and that. Okay, uh, this is not a graph of a CDF because any CDF need to tend to one when x tends to plus infinity. So if we go this way, our function need to tend to one. This is 0 0.4, so somewhere here we have one. We need to be, we need to have a function which uh, increases and tends to one at plus infinity. So this is not a CDF of some random variable, so we, we are moving forward. The next problem is the following. So um, we have two graphs. Red is for random variable x, black is for random variable y. We have two graphs of CDF. So we have increasing functions, continuous functions, tending to 1 at uh, plus infinity, tending to 0 at minus infinity. And the problem is asking uh, which one is larger, the probability that x is between 1, or 1 and 4, or the probability that y is between 1 and 4. So this is 1, this is 1, this is 4. So uh, we can calculate, well, we can understand what is the probability that x is between 1 and 4, and what is the probability that y is between 1 and 4. Okay, so let's let me show graphically what is this probability. So the probability that x is between 1 and 4, because red one was for x, so I'm calculating the value of our CDF of x at that point 1. So this is this probability, and uh, not probability, this value. So this is f, because we have two random variables, I need to specify that this is the CDF of random variable x at 1, and this is the value, so f x for random variable x at 4. And because of continuity of our CDF, we can calculate the probability that x is between 1 and 4 as the height of this interval. So this is exactly equal to this probability in black. So probability that x is between, I'm not including, sorry, I need to erase that. Mm -hmm less than x, and this is less than 4. Now let me change the color and take... Okay, I can take this color. And now I want to show graphically uh, the probability that y is between 1 and 4. And the black curve was the CDF for the graph of CDF for y. Okay, again 1 and 4, uh, I need to calculate the value of our CDF of y at the point 1, then the value of our CDF of, well, let me write it here, fy at 4, 
and then calculate the difference between them. Again, we have a continuous CDF. So even uh, four is not included here, but we can calculate this as the difference between the CDF of Y at four and CDF of Y at one. So this will be the probability that Y is between one and four. Okay, and you can see that this size is larger than that size. So this is larger than this probability. So the chances are higher than that uh, Y is between one and four than X is between one and four. Okay, let's move forward. Now, not a graphical example. Now we have a function given analytically, our important sigmoid function. So usually people are using this sigma x notation. Sorry, uh, let me change to blue one. Mm -hmm. So, well, I will use that f of x. So this is our function. Uh, last time we have checked that this is a, a function satisfying all properties for CDF. So this is a CDF for some random variable x. We do not know much about x, but we can calculate some probabilities concerning that x by using this CDF. So uh, let me just give the graph of that sigmoid function. So if this is x, this is f of x, sorry, f of x, uh, and this is 1. So we will have a graph like this for our sigmoid function. So something like that. It tends to 1 at plus infinity. Now, um, to calculate the probability that x is exactly equal to, sorry, I need to close that, uh, 1.42, this is 42, 1.42, uh, we need to calculate, so this is f, the CDF, at 1.42 minus f, 1.42. 42.42 minus. So the left hand side limit at 1.42 for this graph, for this function. Because our function is continuous everywhere, so this limit will be exactly equal to the value. So this is exactly equal to zero. So the probability that x will take that particular value is zero. And this is um, correct for any value here. If I will write, say, 3 here, I will get again 0, etc. Okay, so uh, the next problem is, what is the probability that x is less or equal than 0? So this is equal to, by the definition of our CDF, to the value of our CDF at 0. And because we have analytically the value of our function, we are just plugging here 0, Instead of x, and we get e to the 0, this is 1, 1 over 2. So this is 1 over 2. So there is a 50% chance that, our, that the values of our x will be less or equal than 0. Okay. Concerning that third question, to calculate this probability, because of continuity of our CDF uh, at 0, so, in fact, I need to write something like this, but because our f is continuous at every point, this is equal to f of 0, and this is again 1 over 2. 1 over 2. Okay. Next is this probability, and this probability, because again, our CDF is continuous at every point, so this will be f of 2 minus f of minus 2, sorry, so I need to erase f of 
minus two uh, mm -hmm. minus two and this is equal to f at two is one over one plus e to d minus two and minus one over one plus e to d plus two and we can calculate this number this difference by using some calculator or some software i will not do that okay the next thing is to calculate this probability and i will calculate it here because uh, we have two disjoint intervals so that probability will be equal to the sum of these uh, two events minus one to zero and plus the probability that x is between x is in uh, three and twelve so this is equal to so the probability that x is between minus 1 is zero and 0 i can write this as minus 1 is less than x is less than 0 and again by using this formula i will calculate that as a difference between f of 0 and f of minus 1 okay this is the value of our first probability and then plus uh, to calculate this probability i need to calculate again because our cdf is continuous at every point uh, it is not so important if this point is included or not so this will be f of 12 minus f of 3. so it remains just to plug the values here and to calculate this number Mm -hmm. let's move forward and our next example the sixth example is the following interesting question so we have a cdf of some random variable given by this formula by the way we were considering this last time in our lecture in a classroom uh, now we have seen that this is a a CDF of some random variable. Now the problem is to describe that random variable x with this probability. So what it means to describe? Mm, let's see what that means. Okay, first I want to draw the graph of this function. So these are my axes x, f of x. I'm drawing the CDF graph. So let me take red pencil. So my f is 0 up to the point 0. Sorry. Not including 0, so this is point 0. And for any positive and for any non negative x, f is equal to 1. So I will have this is 1. I will have something like this. So piecewise constant uh, CDF graph. Okay. So how to describe, how to get some information about that random variable X. Okay. So let me take view pencil. Let me ask just a few questions. So what is the probability that this x, that random variable x, about which we know only the CDF, so we have only the CDF information and no other information about that random variable x. So what is the probability that x is between minus 3 and, say, minus 1? So this is minus 3, minus 1, somewhere here. Well, um, Clearly, we need to calculate by using that formula minus 1 minus f of, well, in fact, I need to add minus here, f of minus 3. But because f is continuous at that point, the left-hand limit at minus 1 will be 
uh, exactly the value of f at minus 1 and this is equal to 0 0 sorry and this is equal to 0 the value of our function at that point is 0 at that point is 0 even the left hand side limit is 0 so this will be 0 so the probability that x is between minus 3 and minus 1 is 0 so no chances for x to be between minus 3 and minus 1 next let's calculate this probability so what is the probability that x is less than minus let me write less or equal than minus 0 0.2 0 0.2 so this is 0 0.2 minus 0 0.2 sorry 0 0.2 okay by definition of our cdf this is the value of our cdf at minus 0 0.2 and the value at zero point minus zero point two is exactly zero. So again, no chances for x being uh, less or equal than minus zero point two. So x cannot take well the probability is zero cannot take values uh, la uh, less than less or equal than minus zero point two two with positive probability. Okay. Another question: What is the probability that uh, x is larger than um, say z not zero well 0 0.5 so the probability that x is larger than 0 0.5 can be calculated in two ways either to pass to complements and I will do that in that way or just by using the uh, formula for this probability so I can write this as 0 0.5 is less than x and that is less than plus infinity okay so this is equal to 1 minus i am passing to complement and the complement of this event is that x is less or equal than 0 0.5 so probability that x is less or equal than 0 0.5 and this is equal to 1 minus f at 0 0.5 and this is equal to this is equal to because f at this point so this is 0 0.5 say 0 0.5 let me put that uh, f at that point is 1 so this will be 1 minus 1 and this is 0 so no chances for x to be larger than 0 0.5 and if I will change that 0 0.5 to 0 point say 1 then again no chances for uh, x being z larger than 0 0.5 so what can we say about x okay another thing is that we can calculate the probability that x is exactly equal to 0 and we know how to calculate this probability we just need to calculate the jump size, the height of this difference. So the value of our CDF at 0 minus the left hand side limit at 0. And the value at 0 is 1, but the left hand side limit at, at 0 is 0. So 1 minus 0, and this is equal to 1. So the probability that x is taking 0 is 1 so that means we have something like this x is taking the value 0 with probability 1 so this is the description description of our random variable well this is the almost the same in probability sense that x is 0 Mm -hmm. move forward uh, number 7 example 21.7 um, we have a random variable x given through its cdf okay and our task is to describe get some information about the values of our, our x Describe in some way which values are more probable, which values are less probable, etc. for that x. Okay? Let me 
just give several examples. Um, the idea is the, the idea between uh, behind this example is to give the feeling, the sense how to read information about random variable x uh, by using the graph or the values of its CDF. Not that we are not drawing the value, the, the graph of x random variable. We do not have random variable anywhere here. We just have uh, the CDF graph. This is the CDF graph. This is the CDF of x. Um, just by using, just by looking at this graph, we, we can get a lot of information about x. Well, in fact, any necessary, any possible information uh, about that random variable. So this is one. And using this graph, we can infer that the probability, uh, well, this was one of our previous examples, the probability that x is 1 is this difference. So the jump size is just the probability that x is 1, and this was something around 0.25. This value minus that value. Okay, so we have some information. So x can take the value 1 and the probability of x being 1 is 0 0.25. By the way, if we will change this 1 to any other number, if I will write say 0 here or 3 here, then this probability will be 0. Because of continuity uh, of uh, our CDF at other points. Sorry, I need to write back this. Mm -hmm. Now, what is the probability? Say, let's calculate the probability that x is less than minus 2. Or less or equal to that. Well, in fact, this is exactly equal to the probability that x is less than minus 2 because our CDF is continuous at that point minus 2. Okay. Uh, by the definition of our CDF, this probability is just giving the value of our CDF at minus 2. This is the graph of our CDF f of x. So uh, f at minus 2 will be this much, and this is very small. So this is Mm, well, say 0 0.01, something like that. So uh, there are very low chances that x will be less or equal than minus 2. The chances that the probability that x is less or equal than minus 2 is 0 0.01. Okay, next, what is the probability, let me write it here, what is the probability that x is larger than, say, uh, 2? x is larger than 2. So this is 2, this is the value of our CDF at 2, and the probability that x is larger than 2 is just uh, the difference between 1 and this, the, this height, this height. Well, you can see that by writing, by using complements. So. Uh, the probability that x is larger than 2 is exactly equal to 1 minus probability that x is less or equal than 2. And this is uh, 1 minus the value of our CDF at 2. And the value of CDF at 2 is 0 0.99, close to 1. And this is uh, 0 0.01, say. So the chances that x is larger than 2 are very small. So, in fact, x is taking its most of its values uh, of x are between minus 2 and 2. So, we can continue this way. So, what is the probability that x is between, uh, say, minus 1 and, say, 1, including or excluding 1, say, including 1. So, this is by using that formula with CDFs, f of 1 minus f of minus 1, and we can calculate this, this is equal to uh, f of 1 is, f of 1 is this value, 
that was 0 0.8, 0 0.8, and minus, uh, f at minus 1, well, here we have minus 1, f at minus 1 is this much, and this is close to 0 0.1, maybe, 0 0.1. 0.7. So 70% probability that x is between minus 1 and 1, including 1 and not including minus 1. And you can continue this way and calculate the probabilities that x is between some two particular numbers, say 0, 3, 0, 1, 0, 0 0.5, etc. So uh, the importance of this example of describing was how to read information about our random variable x by just looking to the graph of CDF. So important idea, important thing is that CDF is giving a lot of information, all necessary information about our random variable x. So let's move forward. And just one remark. <clears throat> We will not, uh, we have solved several problems concerning this function. This is a nice CDF function. Behind this CDF, there is a random variable, and there are, in fact, many random variables behind this CDF. Uh, but the remark is that we will not consider in our course uh, random variables with this kind of CDFs. Uh, but instead, but instead, uh, we will deal with piecewise constant CDFs, well, CDFs of discrete random variables, or completely continuous, continuous at every point CDFs, and that will be CDFs for continuous random variables. So later on we will uh, talk about discrete random variables, we will talk about continuous random variables. For uh, discrete random variables we will have piecewise constant CDFs, and for continuous random variables, we will have continuous CDFs. So let me just give that kind of thing. So for discrete random variables, just the idea, we will talk about that discrete and continuous random variables a lot soon. So for, for a discrete random variable, we will have this kind of CDF. So up to some point zero, then jump and constant, then jump, well, constant, then another jump, constant, and up to plus infinity, it is one. So this is one. We will have this kind of a function, CDF function. So this is CDF f of x of some random variable which is discrete. So this is x. So we will just consider, only consider CDFs of this form or for a continuous random variable. Okay, let me take another colored pencil. So I need to erase this. Sorry, this is my first online video. So I'm taking blue pencil or pen maybe, Ooh, oh, sorry. Mm. Okay, I will have something like this. This is x, this is f of x. And for a continuous random variable, our CDF will look like the following. So it will be continuous. It will go to 1 at plus infinity. So this is 1. It will be increasing, continuous, tending to 0 when x tends to minus infinity and tending to 1 when x tends to plus infinity. Okay, so we will consider only that two types of uh, examples of CDFs piecewise constant and continuous. So this was the first part of our lecture uh, number 21.
I will continue with another video, the second part about discrete random variables. Thank you for watching. Have a nice time. Bye.